This week on Maker Update, flipping the script on phone notifications, a surprise ending for Ivan's marble clock, moving mirrors, and synchronized shoelaces. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and this is Maker Update 2024 edition. I hope you're all having a good year so far. There are a bunch of cool projects to catch you up on, so let's get started with the project of the week. On Hackaday, there's a great new project by Guy Dupont that he's calling Mailblocks. In an effort to limit the distraction from random push notifications on his phone, Guy is using a Raspberry Pi connected to his home network to block out the DNS traffic that would trigger these notifications. But when he places his phone inside this little toy mailbox, the notification block on his network is temporarily lifted and the flood of notifications and dopamine can come through and he can take his phone back out and catch up on what he missed. From a hardware perspective, there's nothing too complicated going on here. You've got the Pi connected to your home router, and then you have this little portable battery-powered mailbox cubby, which is housed in a Melissa and Doug toy mailbox for kids. In here, you have a Feather ESP32 board, which is able to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. There's also a little hobby servo to make the mailbox flag go up and down. And one extra clever, low-tech aspect of the design is that instead of using a micro switch or brake beam sensor or something complicated to detect when the phone is placed inside, he's using a long, loose spring nested inside a larger spring. Each spring makes up one side of a switch, so when the phone goes in and bends the long spring into contact with the short spring surrounding it, it signals the feather board to unleash the notifications. Not only does this make the switch fairly foolproof, but there's no reason it wouldn't work with anything you put in there. Really though, the reason I love this project so much is that it delivers on one of the promises of DIY technology, the idea that we can use these tools to actually push back on consumer technology and customize it for our unique needs. Amen. A smartphone has become a necessary part of existing in the modern world, but we have the power to draw some boundaries for our own peace of mind. More projects. For those of you following the Ivan Miranda giant marble clock build, part three is out and is essentially the grand finale. The end result is phenomenal and apparently very, very loud. The good news is he solves the jamming issue that has been plaguing this project from the beginning. The bad news is the poor guy has to fundamentally redesign and rebuild the entire machine from the ground up. I swear this is the curse of large scale marble mechanics. The musician Winter Katan hit a similar roadblock that sent him all the way back to the drawing board. I'm sure we've all had moments like this in our own projects. It's humbling, but it does make the final victory that much sweeter. For a project on a more manageable scale, check out this array of individually addressable mirrors by John Bumstead. This is an exploration of the principle behind DLP projectors where a micro array of teeny tiny mirrors is used to modulate pixel brightness. In John's project, he's using solenoids to switch these little square mirrors in and out of alignment. It actually reminds me of a kind of split flap display, but with the flaps mechanically linked, instead of magnetically driven. You also get that satisfying solenoid click. It's a pretty cool project just on its own, but there's also a lot of cool ways to take this. You can scale it up or down, swap out the mirrors for different elements, create a different shape, or play around with the way it interacts with lights or lasers. Now for some tips and tools on Adafruit, Aaron St. Blaine has a cool guide on making animated LED shoelaces that synchronize with each other. And just like her LED signage guide we covered a few episodes back, the core of this project is really an exploration of one of the lesser known functions of the excellent WLED software for ESP32 boards. In this case, she's demonstrating the WLED access point feature, which allows one board to act as a server that the other boards will synchronize to. Shoelaces are a fun example, but you can take this further with multiple access point sync groups across a costume, or exterior lighting, or any place where it makes sense for different sections of LEDs to have discrete power, but still synchronize with each other. Also on Adafruit, Liz Clark has a guide on a new development board called Memento. This is an ESP32 based board with an integrated camera module, some buttons, a microphone, a speaker, a screen, 
and a micro SD card slot for storing images. There's also a bunch of ports for connecting to other sensors and modules, but on its own, with the provided code library and example code, you've got a functioning open source camera that you can adapt for all kinds of uses. On the Blondie Hacks YouTube channel, there's a great new tutorial covering the ins and outs of heat treating steel. From the types of tool steel, what you need to harden them, how to dial back the process with tempering, how to gauge hardness, and on a practical level, how to use these techniques to restore or create your own tools. And finally, a quick tip from the John's Projects YouTube channel on creating a foot-operated wire stripper. In this example, he's got a jig on his workbench for cutting and stripping a specific length of wire over and over. Instead of doing it by hand and killing his wrist, he's cleverly run some throttle cable through the wire stripper handle and connected the other end to a car accelerator pedal. Now, the pedal is overkill. As a car modifier, he probably had this laying around. You could probably make something like this with just a long door hinge. If you have a project where you need to cut and strip a ton of identical lengths of wire, a system like this could really save your wrist. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest Another Teaching Moment video on the basics of understanding antennas. I don't know about you, but somehow I've made it this far in my life with only a rudimentary and incomplete understanding of radio transmitters and receivers. In just around two minutes, this video introduced some useful concepts that were new to me. Definitely worth a watch. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Big thanks to DigiKey for keeping this show rolling another year, and thank you for watching. Happy New Year, and I'll see you soon.